Melody number nine by Carlos de Balia. This is recorded to celebrate the ninth anniversary of LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Melody number nine. For several months past, the daily press in Paris has reported with a regularity, a brevity, and a vagueness truly alarming cases of malady number nine and this illness which appears and disappears from our great dailies like an object in the hands of a pressed digitator which dodges about from neighbourhood to neighbourhood and from one quarter of the city to the other and which bestows the touch of death impartially on all is absolutely unknown to a majority of the people who are in complete ignorance of its symptoms and manifestations some say that it resembles the bubonic plague others insist that this fatal disease is propagated by a creeping contagion the nature of which is not yet well determined some people will assure you with the utmost conviction that the vehicle by which the mysterious but already famous disease is conveyed is a little parasite which when once settled on its victim proves impossible to dislodge the same uncertainties and doubts and contradictory reports are current regarding the symptoms and history of the disease as regarding the manner in which it is communicated there have been times when the short newspaper paragraphs dealing with the new malady paragraphs which never have exceeded ten lines in length would suggest that the best preventive and possible cure is to follow an ultra spartan regimen in regard to diet at other times the preponderant opinion seems to be that the infection has been brought to paris by foreign pleasure seekers who have flocked to the gay capital from all parts of the world and it is urged that such visitors should be subjected to a strict quarantine there are still others who either do not comprehend or utterly reject these contradictory scientific explanations and regard this new malady which threatens us and in which interest is constantly revived by some new alarming episode as a mysterious visitation of providence for which we must seek some ethical explanation but explain it as you like and describe it as you like the fact remains that in paris everyone is talking with real or affected terror of malady number nine without anyone knowing certainly what that malady is what its symptoms are and what measures should be taken to combat it and as is perfectly natural under such conditions the people have with laudable unanimity adopted the heroic resolve to pay no attention to it notwithstanding all this when i chanced the other day to stumble upon a distinguished medical acquaintance of mine while sauntering along one of the beautiful and solitary walks in the park at versailles a gentleman whom i had not seen for several years i seized the occasion which providence seemed to have granted me to inquire into this mystery i started out as if i were indifferent to the subject and approached the topic little by little in a roundabout way in order that i might not alarm the professional reserve of my acquaintance malady number nine my medical friend repeated wrinkling his eyebrows and whirling his heavy cane in the air in a rather intimidating way don't you know that this malady considered as a specific malady does not exist and never has existed malady number nine is merely an imaginary disease an hallucination which is a perfectly natural product of these times it is certain and obvious that if the human race or better said a great majority of the human race does not change its method of living it will be impossible for us to survive on this planet life on our globe will become impossible because the atmosphere is filled with poisons engendering varied pathological conditions the cumulative effect of which has resulted in the appearance of a disease which in default of a more descriptive name has been called malady number no. nine we discover associated with this disease the bacteria of falsehood dissipation shamelessness and greed 
with five other pernicious microbes which we have not been able to isolate and classify with precision but which bear a strong resemblance to hypocrisy sharp dealing laziness tyranny and aggression the accumulative effect of these germs and microbes is now designated by the name we have just mentioned as my friend the doctor proceeded he began to swing his arms as if they were wings of a windmill and his heavy stick cut the air so that you could almost hear it hiss then suddenly calming himself and leaning against the pedestal of a statue of diana he continued lowering his voice any man with eyes in his head can see that we are entering a period of horrifying decadence the great war which for brief periods especially in its early stages seemed to be a purifying element became on account of its duration a malignant source of deadly corruption after several centuries of uninterrupted progress in civilization we have been precipitated in the short space of five years into a condition hardly above that of the brutes even those who previously possessed the highest moral character who were truly good have been contaminated today the average man thinks only of acquiring wealth no matter by what means and of spending it ostentatiously with the least possible personal effort lying has become the art of governments and our rulers and leaders have lied until the common people no longer believe anything those noble phrases and lofty ideals which formerly swayed the masses and caused them to exert themselves to the utmost for five years and to perform great feats of heroism today have become a common laughing stock were you now to appeal to mankind for new sacrifices the people would merely shrug their shoulders in disdain love of material pleasure has seized the whole world the people are abandoning the country to herd in great cities there they live under physical conditions which are constantly growing worse in an atmosphere pervaded with poison which unless god works a miracle will produce terrible results malady number nine that disease bear in mind and don't forget it is in substance a preliminary disease a disease preceding another which will be my friend the doctor here emitted a frightfully savage yell a yell which he evidently wished to suggest the explosion of bombs the roar and crackling of great conflagrations the rattling of rifles and machine guns and clearing half the width of the roadway at a single bound he disappeared down a bypath running at full speed the next day i chanced to learn that my friend the physician had recently been confined in a sanitarium they tell me he imagines himself a prophet and predicts it calmly and reasonably enough a violent social revolution and the imminence of a fearful epidemic which will ravage the whole world and which he calls malady number ten this news that he was mentally affected did not surprise me of course for i had divined something of the kind during our conversation in the park of versailles thinking over the incident later however i have had moments of doubt recalling that ancient proverb out of the mouths of children and fools however why should we trouble ourselves now about malady number ten when science has not yet discovered with certainty the nature of malady number nine end of malady number nine by carlos de balia read by anusha ayer mumbai